Union Pacific makes the best movies. Shh, you guys, this is my story. My story is... Is that a lung? Uh, ah, the best cast that Union Pacific has to offer. If there's a reverend in it, you know it's got to be good. Amen. <laughs> Quite a coup getting Francois Poulenc to do the music. Herman Boxer and Joseph Anson were the Babalu Mandel and Lowell Gans of their town. Woo! Wider shade of pale! Go in peace to love and serve Union Pacific. So we have 70 days in each year? We're going to have to go a long way to get back to train safety. Our car is kind of a downer to them. <laughs> it's up with brakemen. Castrati's greatest hits. But let's visit Sister Bertrand. It is written in the Old Testament to each of us this allotment of years. Three score and ten. I sure tore through mine. And in these years, there is the time of man. Yeah, shame he died, huh? I have to fulfill his destiny. To work together with his fellow man in the wonderfully complex pattern of everyday life. Well, they really capture the complexity. Mm -hmm. A time to be born. Oh, yeah. And the time to grow. To become aware of the loveliness of all things living. Sure, this beats having friends. In the call of youth to youth. To learn the happiest lesson of all. Dishes. That the fullness of life can only be tasted when our happiness is shared with others. <laughs> all right, go, Dad. And later, Woo. a time of maturity. To reflect. It all sucks. To relax. To I enjoy. I regret everything. Yes. This is the heritage to which we are born. The blessings to which we may all look forward. Really going through the funerals. Yet, here in my parish, there are some who can only look back. I hate them. They are the victims. Unable to reap the full enjoyment of the days of their year. Chief Justice Earl Warren. They are the victims of themselves. I hate themselves. My church is in a railroad town. Not far from a big freight terminal and repair shop. All mine. In my congregation are railroad people in every capacity. Well, he thinks loud. And not one who isn't safety conscious. Not one who isn't drunk. Accident haters, all of us. Mm. Hating the waste, the pain, the needlessness. The filth that is humanity. Yet try as we may, do what we will, there comes a time. I'm bigger than Jesus. Oh, no, the reverend is killed again. Ironically, the ambulance driver hit four people on the way there. <laughs> a fellow worker hurt. Get out of town, accident lover. You never get hardened to a sight like this. I had an accident, too. But it isn't only what happens to the man in the ambulance. Oh? There's another story behind most accidents. Communism. The story of what happens to the others. The doctor's wife had died. He paused to smell You might say rose. I've got sort of an inside track when it comes to knowing the inside story behind an accident. And it strikes me that the ones who are hurt most by the carelessness that causes accidents are the ones who weren't even there. I didn't hate accidents enough. Shame. I often stop by here for a cup of coffee. That's really interesting. Whenever I do, I'm reminded of the things that happened to the people who weren't even there. Oh, sure. I... Huh? <laughs> I reread the story in the sad eyes of the girl who serves me. And it really pisses me off. Yes, I'm ready. This is Helen. Hi, Helen. Although she has never been in an accident. She acts like she has. Helen is nevertheless an accident victim. Can I get my pancakes? Her eyes were not always sorrowful. Once they were bright and shiny. Her coat glossy. Yes, I remember how those eyes used to glow whenever Helen thought about Joe. Joe Tendler was... It's about Sander! Ah! In those days, Joe was about as average a young fellow as you'd be likely to meet. It sounds great. Young, easygoing, good company. Prone to violence. He hadn't a complaint in the world. Well, maybe one complaint. He was getting a little tired of being a bachelor, eating on the run... Cleaning up your own place, if you got around to it. But all that was due for a change pretty soon. He'd chosen his new look. Yes, Joe was a pretty lucky guy. A good job as road electrical foreman, 
A wonderful girl who wanted nothing in the world more than to be Mrs. Joe. So his name is Joe Joe? I guess. On his way to the job that morning, Joe had to stop by to see Helen. There was something he'd forgotten to give her last night. A taste of the spoiler. The restroom and coffee is back. In front of all these people, behave. <laughs> but of course, Joe was behaving. The way any lucky, happy young fellow about to be married would behave. It was only natural. <laughs> Joe had to take off in a hurry to reach that job on time. He had a lot more women to kiss on his route that and morning. And Helen, well, she was on the job. And her face had that glad look I'll always remember. My man is average. It made people feel good just watching her feeling good as she went through the motion. I'm watching you feel good. And though she was quick and sure and competent in everything she did, mm -hmm. she spit in the air. She eggs. was really a million miles away from that little mm -hmm. restaurant. Mr. and Mrs. Joe Toast. A million mm -hmm. miles away. Yeah. In a dream world all her own. Come over to this side. Obey the toaster. That dream world had everything. A church complete with ministers saying the proper word. You are getting sleepy. I was flattered to be a part of Helen's dream. Ooh. There was a ring in it. And, of course, a beautiful dress and veil. For Joe. And a handsome groom. And me, of course. <laughs> and when the ceremony was over, there was the first of many, many kisses. In my version, things went a lot further. Yes, this was Helen's very own dream. And she was going to make it worth dreaming. Well, I gotta get back to my shift, honey. She wasn't skimping on anything. She dreamed of tract housing. There was that perfectly scrumptious model house she'd been wanting for all these years. Squalor contemporary. Here it was, exactly as she'd imagined. And here they were. And what was the sense in waiting? Plan 5 from outer space. Joe, the fastest sale on record. And while she was dreaming, she'd furnished that house that very afternoon. So Joe could read his evening paper on that pretty couch that very night. Where's my damn dinner? So she could take that paper away and cuddle close. Ooh. She dreamed of everything any dreamy young girl had ever dreamed before. <gasps> They're in hell! Of crackling fire, of dimmed lights, of love. They should have had a train scene and here. even in her dreams, Helen missed Joe when he was gone. That was so incredibly average. She was a clever dreamer. So she arranged for little Joe to be there to keep her from getting lonesome when Daddy was away. Speaking of accidents. The beginning of a new life, but the end of a dream. Mm. Yeah, okay, a diaper, the toast, and butter the baby. I had... But on the job late in the afternoon of that day, the real-life Joe was in a real live hurry. He hadn't seen his Helen since early that morning. Wichita lineman. Come on, you guys. Get a move on. Let's get out of here. He might have been heard to say. To the impatient Joe, the men seemed almost purposely stalling as they stowed their gear. Joe smelled conspiracy in everything. And now the wheels of fate were set in motion. Call them the wheels of fate or the wheels of chance. Or call them Ernie. But consider... The man at the wheel was in the driver's seat. In any case, it involved a wheel. It was Joe who was calling the turn of the wheel. Oh, Joe is the king of the world. You went through a stop sign. Better take it easy, Joe. Get out of my head, Reverend. And Joe's thirst for danger seems quite reasonable. The others, they were along for the ride. Whether they liked it or not. Liked it, they hated it. Flag on the moon. What could they do? They were trapped. Yes, Joe had a baby, and he just couldn't get there fast enough. For those two scoops of raisins. Oops. Oh, not again, Joe. That's your standard crash bully. Now it was payoff time. One, Oops. still able to move. Mm -hmm. Two, still able to move. They had escaped the trap. It was an average accident. Their three score and ten were still before them. Give or take a score. But the trap had sprung on Joe. Serve you right. Yes. Hmm? Now it was payoff time. Such are the wages of sex. Easygoing Joe Tendler. Was trapped in his own juicer. Hmm. Joe became an avant-garde composer. After a year in that neck brace, Joe wasn't quite such good company as he used to be. But the words said, for better or for worse, 
in sickness or in health. Will you take this bionic man? Sure, Joe tried to call it off. But a girl like Helen doesn't run out. There was quite a difference between Helen's dream and the reality. There'd be quite a difference between living with the dream Joe and the real one. Their honeymoon at Six Flags is going to be real fun. Yeah. Hey, Joe. <coughs> ah! It needn't have happened at all. You could have married me. Look at this button I found in the collection plate. There are many days in the years left for Joe. Too many. For George Price, there are fewer. Hey, you dead yet? And the days George does have left are embittered days. <coughs> Flavorless. Futile. Get off my land, you pious son of a... To George, the sound of that approaching car as it nears the house across the street prods back into his memory. A scene he has fought to erase. But then so does every other sound. A scene he cannot forget. Well, he's having a great day. This is Lenny Bellows, the boy across the street. The boy who once was like a son to George. Just across the street. Where every day George can't possibly help seeing him. Better go buy some salt pellets. Every day, George remembers. When he was good friends with Dean Rusk. George remembers how it was in the happy days with the Price and Bellows family. Eating sandwiches. Fred Bellows, Lenny's father, and George. Good neighbors, good friends. And Michelob. They'd spend hours figuring the fun they'd have on their retirement pay. We. The trips they'd take together. The wonderful places they'd see. It would be soon now. Let's go on a Hawaiian sex their tour. Their wives had waited patiently through all the long years of railroad service. Tony Dow. would go to college. It was all planned. There wasn't a cloud in the bright blue sky of their future. Then I showed up. <laughs> Forty-two years of good, honest work. George was proud of those years. <laughs> George. Proud of the strength and stamina that had kept him going. But today, somehow, he didn't feel so good. And when it was time to go back to work, George wondered whether he was going to be able to make it. George, you're hilarious. Honey, these last few weeks, he hadn't been quite up to snuff. Diarrhea is like a Nobody storm. Nobody noticed. He hadn't mentioned it. Probably just indigestion. Hey, have a massive coronary on your own time. He'd be all right. If he could only hold out until retirement time. It's at 5 o'clock today. But now he had a job to do. And nobody was going to say George Price gave up on the job. George Price gave up on a job. There, I said it. And so, as Fred Bellows climbed up to go back to his job, George went back to his. Robust and cheerful as ever. A small voice whispered, report sick. Get a relief, man. Don't be a fool, George. Kill your parents. But George had a job to do, and he was going to stick to it. Boo Radley waved him on. So there was George. And Fred. And Bill said, come on, easy. They call him the derailleur. Well, what's with Georgie Borgie? <laughs> Shouldn't have thought of Mamie Eisenhower. Oh, George, if this is one of your pranks. <laughs> oh. Oh. oh, this is terrible. He died minutes before his time. Good one, George. George tried to go to Fred Bellow's funeral. But Baywatch was but on. The doctor said no. You don't walk around two days after a heart attack. Uh, why couldn't he have killed the guy two doors but down? But they couldn't keep him away from the window. He watched Grace and Lenny. And Squiggy. Lenny, who wouldn't be going to college this fall. Because he's dumb. Or any fall. Can you bring me back a program? Grace, who faced a future of grief and loneliness. Boring. <sighs> there, my problem went away. All right, let's get this guy planted. They'll circle George's house a few times, then go on to the cemetery. That was over three years ago. George hasn't moved. George still can't get around very well. Lenny Bellows still lives across the street. And though he has long since forgiven George, yet his simplest actions have become, to George, signs of rejection and hatred. You know, staring off into space hasn't been as exciting as I thought it would be. And there, George Price is doomed to stay. Across a little street, a thousand miles wide. 
Now, let's get to the dismemberment. <laughs> As I said before, most of my congregation are railroad people. I know the road does everything in its power to prevent accidents, see that equipment and working procedures in the shops are as safe as it's possible to make them. Mm -hmm. And by constant reminders to keep the men aware of the life and death importance of observing safety rules. See our elaborate safety system? <laughs> Yet, still they come. This is Needle the Park. The ones who forget, even for the barest fraction of a second, that with safety, there are no second chances. Oh, well, who needs fingers? Not all trips to the hospital, though, are necessarily disastrous. Just mine. For example, there was the trip Charlie O'Neill made with his wife. Oh. That was about the happiest trip Charlie ever took. <laughs> he and Sue had been looking forward to it for years, waiting, hoping. For a pap smear? Finally, it happened. There'd be a new little O'Neill along any minute now. Charlie was so happy, he forgot everything else. <laughs> well, almost everything. He almost forgot his ventriloquial figure. <laughs> he didn't quite believe them a little later when they told him it might take a while and he might as well go back to work. This has nothing take to do with you. you. Go on. On the way to the shop, he remembered something. He had to go kiss Helen. <laughs> it was just about the last thing he did remember that day. Cigar. He was going to Ernie Kovacs' house. They weren't going to catch Charlie off base when the big news came. Charlie was close now. You could smell him. He hoped it wouldn't be too long before he could break them out. So he disrobed. There was a phone call coming, he told the foreman. A big one. Please get it to him fast when it came. Yeah, get back to work. Charlie did remember one more thing that day. To take proper care getting Bill's attention. Gentle pressure on the shoulder so as not to start with. And a soft kiss on the neck. That hissing open flame is deadlier than any snake. Charlie knew it. Every man who works a torch knows it. When you come near him, you come up smooth. You don't make any sudden motion. I have no idea what I'm doing. <laughs> Picasso's woman looks like a baboon. <laughs> this was it. Phone call for Charlie. Charlie, does fur run in your family? Someone brought donuts! <laughs> yes, yes, a boy, nine pounds, wow! I've got great sperm! You can forgive Charlie for being excited, who wouldn't be? A newborn father is one of the most excitable people in the whole world. Other than the father at the time of conception. <sighs> You can forgive Charlie for passing out cigars during work hours. Sure. Even though he knew he should have waited till lunch. He should have waited till lunch. Hey, it's all there. You can even forgive Charlie for what happened next. For that one instant of final, fatal forgetting. Alan Arkin! Why am I welding? Why would I be welding with this? I don't know, I understand. Oh! Ah! Hey. You don't have to hold it there. Oh, a film. Wow. Well, now he's yes, T-Bone Burnett. You can forgive Charlie for everything. And you can understand how it happened. Yet I want him punished. But one thing you cannot do. Put your elbow in your ear. You cannot change it. It is done. And there is nothing you can say to Charlie. Except gentle pressure. He has said it all to himself many times. You're a nice puppy. Here we go. Okay. He has said that he was careless. That it could have been avoided. That he knew better. Here's your bottle. That he only forgot for a second. One tiny second. And in every case, Charlie is right. But still, the thing is done. I'm over the fence, man. I'm out of here. Charlie has never seen his baby son. Or the five Mrs. Buchanan. Charlie never will. So the leading causes of accidents are joy, sex, and old age? It is written in the Old Testament to each of us this allotment of years. Mm -hmm. Three score and ten. And there's a psalm about when welding. When you add that up, literally, it says that the days of our years number 25,567. Mm -hmm. A trivial accident might take away one or two of those days. A serious one might take away a hundred or a thousand. A disastrous one would be cool to watch. Suddenly, there might be no days left at all. America's favorite deacon of death. Hey, we're, we're trying to film here. The Lord has allotted them. Mm -hmm. Let not man by his thoughtlessness 
diminish the blessings of the Lord. Ironically, the Reverend was maimed and crippled giving communion. Reverend, I'm having a crisis of faith. What should I do? Get safety goggles, my son. Remember to worship at the railroad of your choice.